Hello again, everyone, and thanks for listening in. Welcome to RavageLee.com and our interview series, Fascinating Women in Fascinating Worlds. We're going to learn about one of them today. My name is Jerry Strauss, and I have got uh, with me on the line one of the more memorable actors, one of the more memorable characters uh, from one of the more memorable films uh, from uh, – back in the 90s, but through today and beyond, the legacy lives on, as does the career of this very talented young lady, Marilyn Gigliotti. Thank you for joining us here today. Thank you very much, Jerry. Oh, young lady. That's, that's actually really good, though. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, hey. <laughs> we have to start things off the right way. And look, you're certainly uh, someone we want to talk a lot about. You're, you're you're someone who's been around for so long and been working for so long, um, and, and you are still a young lady. And we'd like to talk to you about <laughs> what it's like from being super super duper young to you know as young as you are right now. So let, let's start at the beginning. Um, I, I want to um, just cover a lot of the the. Uh, groundwork that I know you've talked about in different interviews again and again and again, but for those mm-hmm. who maybe aren't that familiar with the view askew uh, the, the, the movie clerks, um, and with you in general, so you have an interesting story about how you got into acting. How did you first decide that you wanted to make this a big part of your life? Well, I mean, growing up, I've always been interested in performance, I guess you can say, in the sense that I loved watching the old movies. Um, I begged my dad uh, or my parents to take dance lessons um, and you know, things like that. They just didn't happen. Um, it, it wasn't something that my parents were uh, familiar with as far as, you know, things like that in the States because they're both from Puerto Rico. Um, and even though we were making our living out here in, in the States, um, it's just not something that was in their realm, I guess. Um, so it wasn't until I was older and married, or actually um, after divorce, that I started doing some dancing. But it's it's the divorce that kind of led me to trying to find myself, I guess you can say. And uh, that's where I found acting. I took some lessons. Um, and then just kind of gradually started doing the process of, of working my way up. So, yeah, uh, you know, to some people, yeah, that's pretty interesting in divorce. <laughs> Led me to Well, it's, you know, because you always hear a, a, a lot of different stories of anyone in the arts, whether it's comedy, whether it's music, um, just the idea of turning something negative emotionally and channeling it into whatever your passion is. And that's a, a very distinct uh, example of that, but it certainly turned into something positive for you. Yeah. Um, now, so you're in acting, and of course, you know, we'll fast forward to Clerks, which is, of course, for those who have not seen it, never heard of it, it was um, probably the first huge success story of a, an extremely low-budget movie that mm-hmm. became a phenomenon. And um, This is a, 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 a movie that launched the career of director Kevin Smith, and it's a very New Jersey centric uh, film, and a very Jersey centric uh, just identity to sort of that whole crew of many of you who were involved in that movie and a lot of the subsequent movies that that he put out. Um, yeah. How did you become involved in Clerks? Uh, well, at the time, I had been uh, doing the community theater circuit, and so I was involved in a play at the time, and. Uh, the the theater that the auditions were held at uh, is a theater that I had actually worked at. So the the rumors were kind of going around. It's like, oh, um, or maybe not exactly rumors, but the word was going around that uh, there were going to be auditions for a movie. And the way that it was put out, it's like, oh, uh, this kid is doing movie and he's having auditions. <clears throat> Excuse me. And... Um, uh, basically, I, I didn't care who was making it. Uh, you know, I I went to the auditions. We had to prepare a monologue. Um, 
And there were quite a few people there, but I think most of the people were just basically watching and what was happening and not really involved in it. Mm. And uh, basically, I did my audition. I got called by Kevin, and he asked me to go to the convenience store that he was actually working at and where we subsequently filmed at. Um, but he had me re- he had me take the script to read it to make sure that I was comfortable with the dialogue that I had to uh, say. And so I took it home with me. I was reading it while I was at work, and um, I was laughing. I I really enjoyed it. I I I liked it. So I pretty much gave him a call, let him know that I was on board, and that's pretty much it. So, for those not familiar with the Kevin Smith style of movies that this this movie really launched, um, very conversational, very frank uh, discussions about everything from pop culture to uh, some of the deepest, darkest aspects of our lives. Uh, we'll get to that in a second. But, I, I, Marilyn, what I want to know, you know, a lot of people have sort of romanticized this idea of what it was like to put a movie like this together, you know, shooting overnight, mm-hmm. you know, doing it guerrilla style on the run and just sort of getting it done with almost no money. What was your actual experience? Because you were a pivotal role in this movie. You were uh, the girlfriend of the main character. Um, He was sort of, I guess, in a way, deciding between the security of his relationship with you versus a different path. Um, So what was your experience like just as far as, you know, hours, days, how long were you actually on set? Uh, what was your overall experience? Um, from what I can remember, <laughs> because it was, and, and, you know, as I say, it was 20 years ago, but actually it was 21 years ago. Oof. We, we, we filmed a year prior um, to it being released. Mm. And um, from what I can remember, I think I was there two or three nights, maybe consecutively, and then uh, an afternoon for the uh, day shots that was that were done, you know, with me walking outside of the the convenience store. Um, so it wasn't as rough on me as it was on Jess and and Brian, um, who were there pretty much every single night, and they also had their day job, which we all did. So you know. The time that I was filming, it was a little difficult because I was going to my day job and then filming at night and getting a couple of hours sleep and going back. But mm-hmm. I really didn't sleep very much that week. <laughs> I, I mean, it, and as rough as that sounds, you really have to take a moment and think about the amount of content that you had to produce, the amount of performance that you had to mm-hmm. be responsible for just a few days worth of work. I mean, on a, on a big budget Hollywood movie, you probably would have been on set for weeks to accomplish that amount of work, but you had to do it. You had to knock it out and be on point. Was there a lot of pressure to, uh, to be as perfect as possible? So it's not to waste time. Um, I always put that pressure on myself, unfortunately, (laughs) um, especially with dialogue. Um, I'm, I'm much better now, but I am a bit of a of a perfectionist. So um, back then I was much worse, and <laughs> so for me, <laughs> so for me it's like I'm all about getting the lines right and perfect and all that kind of stuff. So it's like nobody will be harder on me than me, um, and the amount of dialogue that Kevin puts in his scripts is so daunting you know um it's it's it can be overwhelming and so that was the first thing for me it's just like a matter of getting all that dialogue and remembering it and making sure that I said it and all that kind of stuff um Mm -hmm. so so that that's for me I think was the most difficult part of it um what was the question again (laughs) (laughs) no we were just talking about the the pressures of yeah. It's just the time constraints that you had, which, of course, you know, money is ticking away as time is ticking away, too. Yeah. Um, it, I mean, I, I have to believe everyone was kind of under the gun. Yeah, yeah, because it, we only had so many takes, and the less, the better. Um, right. Because, 
you know, he only had so much film to do. And so it's, it's, you know, that's, that was a pressure. And again, you know, more pressure than I put on myself than anything else. And sometimes that, that can be debilitating in itself. Um, but you know, um, I, I think all in all though, it went pretty well. Yeah, it seems like it. Yeah, we're still talking about it 21 years later. Yeah. Um, if if we weren't talking about it 21 years later, if it was just a project that you did, it, it got out there, some people saw it, and then it faded away, like 99% of, of everything that gets made, would you still be looking at the experience as fondly, or uh, was it uh, – did you feel it was a positive thing even without the results? Oh, definitely, definitely. Um, Yes, yeah. it, yeah. it's, it's something that I treasure. I mean, in the fact that it it did happen the way that it did, just, you know, everybody looks to make their mark on this world and to, to leave some kind of a legacy, you know, whether it be your children or, you know, just something. And mm-hmm. um, I, I'm I'm happy to say that I've got that, and then, yes, I have my daughter as well. And, um, but... It's it's nice to know that I've got something that I can leave behind and that kind of commemorates me in some way. Hmm. Now, you said that you would read the lines ahead of time and they'd asked you, you know, how you felt about your lines and stuff like that. I have to imagine part of it was also um, you sort of giving your thoughts or at least forming an opinion about your character, um, some of the things your character said or did or part of that backstory. Um, and your character was part of an interesting debate that became a big plot point here, which was, um, to keep it PC, her, her sexual promiscuity before her relationship with, Mm -hmm. um, (laughs) that, that, uh, the present relationship that's dealt with in the movie. Um, there's a term that, uh, it's been written about a lot on this website already, um, mm-hmm. it's, you know, it, it's talked about a lot, slut shaming. It's, uh, something, uh, that is really a thing now. Back then mm-hmm. it wasn't really a thing and it was one of those topics that I think a guy like Kevin Smith was pretty brave to bring to the forefront. How did you feel about that as, as sort of a debatable topic that was brought to the forefront in the film? Yeah, I don't know. I, didn't, I don't know that I really gave it much thought. Um, to be honest, um, the only time that I saw that it was a thing was that all of a sudden, you know, that's the catchphrase everybody uses is when they see me. <laughs> well, let's um, bring it out to the open for people for people who haven't seen the movie. Basically, it's brought to light that, that your character, before your relationship with Dante, who's the main character, um, mm-hmm. had... Uh, Performed oral sex thirty. What was the number? Thirty-seven. Thirty-seven times. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, and, and, and actually, I mean, you know, it's all in the way that people look at sexual promiscuity because, um, you know, she, she, to some degree, she. It's not like she was sexually promiscuous. It wasn't, but she did other things, other than you mm-hmm. know, so. It just all yeah. depends on how you kind of look at it, really. <laughs> yeah, it was all, it was very subjective, and mm-hmm. everyone everyone had their opinion. It, it, you know, every character had their own opinion about it. It became a big talking yeah. point. But it was a matter of, you know, previously in movies, you know, you see, we've seen characters who were just so trampy in sort of a cliched way. Um, and your character was nothing like that. Your character was actually the good-hearted, the, the mm-hmm. good girlfriend that was truly loving and supportive, and that just happened to be a part of your past. Um, and it became, you know, a big talking point about, you know, how how do we look at you now? How does Dante mm-hmm. look at you now upon realizing all this? I mean, did mm-hmm. you feel like it was a questionable place to go back then for – what, did you feel it was consistent with the rest of your character? Um, I yeah, I I I don't know how to answer that question. Um, <clears throat> see, let me take it from my point of view. It's like, um, 
I mean, it's not something that I could relate to. Um, but in a sense, it's like there was a lot of Veronica that I could relate to. And, so, and uh, the sexual part, part of it was and part of it wasn't. Because I'm not the type of person to just, you know, go around and, and sleep with any guy or anything like that. And and uh, there has to be a level of com- commitment and, and uh, before anything even evolves to that point. Um, mm-hmm. And and that includes the other part of uh, Veronica as well. So I mean, but it, it's 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 a thing that everybody has for themselves as to what it is that they will or won't, won't do. And so I, I don't know that, I, you know, I just, I'm not sure how to even go beyond about that question. Yeah. I mean, I, I think a big part of the issue, even today, as it's discussed, it's not the the woman's choice choices that she's made necessarily. It's how or if they should be judged for those choices. And I think right. it's pretty clear that, um, you know, that, that sort of dividing line, you know, you, you saw in the film, Dante sort of goes off and in the beginning, he's immediately judging her and thinking of her in a different light and looking sort of down upon her because of what she'd done, not taking into account the kind of person she is or just overall her level of commitment towards him. Right. Um, and, and that goes along the stereotypes, you know, male versus female, because if it were a guy, and be like, oh, great, you're so good. It's like, well, this is really good. But if it were a woman, you know, it's like they're called a slut. So, uh, you know, in this day and age, obviously, it's to each his own. Um, you know, you do what you need to do for you. But it's like, obviously, you know, hopefully nobody's hurting anybody in, in, in that as well. Right. Yeah, and it, and it's interesting that it's still such a hot topic, you know, mm-hmm. despite people like Kevin Smith and you and bringing the topic to light 20 years ago. Um, mm-hmm. I kind of feel like nothing, not a whole lot has changed in that regard. Do you feel differently as a as a woman out in, out in the world? Do you feel like things are looked at with more of an open uh, open head, mind? Um, I, I think in the world today. Uh sex is viewed a little bit differently, but not that differently either. Hmm. Fair enough. Um, Now, I want to ask you about something else because, you know, we touched on it at the very beginning. And of course, Mm -hmm. yes, you are still a young lady. However, (laughs) um, you have had now a 20 plus year career. Um, You are continuing to, you know, appear in films and uh, continuing to pursue roles and things like that. Um, you know, what is your experience? What has your experience been like in looking for different roles as you've gotten, you know, progressed through the years, gotten a little bit older? Has it been a struggle to find the same kinds of parts, regardless of age, but just the same kinds of meaty parts that maybe you've been looking for earlier on in your career? Um. Well, I mean, it's not suffice it to say that I, you know, I'm still not in. in in the level that I want to be at, um, and I'm still pursuing. I still got a day job. I'm not making a living as an actress. Um, but as far as the work that I have done since then, it's it's through the the relationships that I've made that I've been able to find a lot of this work, and it's allowed me to challenge myself and expand on the role that I've actually done, and. Uh, try to be as versatile as I can be as well um, and mm-hmm. trying to find roles again that will challenge me and give me something more and show my range okay so you don't necessarily feel like I mean I'm just I'm just thinking in general about the idea of age and how it can potentially become a hurdle to anyone's career male or female. Really? Um, and I mean, on one hand, I look at someone like a uh, like a Ming Na Wen, who is enjoying this great success as an action star at the age of, I believe, she's fifty right now, um, and sort of a trend towards that, which is pretty cool. Um, on the other hand, as you and I are speaking, um, 
social media has absolutely blown up over the last 24, 48 hours or so um, mm-hmm. with photos of uh, Renee Zellweger and uh, just, you know, comparisons of how she looked when last she was in the public eye towards now and just being very harshly judgmental about that. Do you feel like you're subject to that same kind of judgment every time you go for a part? Um, I think in a different way. One, okay. I've never looked my age. Um, I've always looked younger than my age. So it kind of is a hindrance in some way because um, if I'm young enough to play a role when they look at me, but then they might think of my age and it's like, oh, no, she's too old. Or if uh, they're looking at me at the right age and it's like, no, she looks too young. It's like, <laughs> so I kind of will get both kind of thrown at me. Um, and then in another respect, it's it's how I look at the role. It's like, no, I think I feel I'm too old to be playing that role as much as I might want to play it, you know. So then there's that uh, perspective coming into play as well. So, I mean, I've got it in three different a- avenues. And it's like, I feel like lots of times I kind of fall in the cracks because of those, um, you know, as far as as well as ethnicity. Um, I'm I'm born in the States, uh, Hispanic mm-hmm. background from Puerto Rico, but I don't look Hispanic enough or I look European. <laughs> you are <laughs> really screwed, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's how I look at it. And maybe that's not how the, the industry looks at it, you know, at me. So I, but you can't guess to what the industry wants because lots of times they don't either. <laughs> yeah. So you just have to kind of, uh, you have to sort of overcome maybe the hurdles that you're setting for yourself before you even get to somebody else's opinion about it, which probably sounds like it's the most difficult thing of all sometimes. Yeah. And, and basically it's like sometimes you just have to say, throw it, throw it out the window. It's like, don't even worry about any of that stuff and just, just try to deliver something that you feel that would, would, um, be something that they might want. Mm-hmm. You sound like, I mean, just from talking to you, I think we all kind of understand that you're uh, a harsh critic of yourself, which is, you know, obviously beneficial in, in uh, you know, making you improve and progress and, you know, uh, augment what you bring to the table. Um, <laughs> do you feel like uh, over the years you've developed that thick skin that's, you know, often said to be necessary? to, you know, shrug off the nose to get to the yeses? Definitely. Um, but I don't I don't feel that anybody will ever be able to completely disregard any of that, you know, as, as like you said. Um, you know, I, I will always be more critical of myself than anybody else ever will. Um, and that's that's for me. I mean, I, I, I know that might not be the same for a lot of other people, and there are some people who might say, it's like, oh, they don't care. I mean, I, I don't truly believe that 100% because I think everybody cares to some degree. <laughs> um, and if, but, if they say they don't, they're lying. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. I mean, but to some degree, you you do have to kind of say that to people who have you know, just nothing but negative things to say about you um, because it's all subjective anyway um, and it's personal for them. Uh, mm-hmm. You put 10 people in a room and 10 people are not going to agree on one thing. Right. Yeah. 10, ten doctors rarely even agree <laughs> or <laughs> stuck on an island about some medicine. Usually one of them, one of the 10 disagrees. But, right, um, right. <laughs> well, I, I want to talk about just real quick. I know our time is limited, but we want to talk about um, current projects that you have. One of which I, I took a look at, and I, I was very impressed with just the look of this project: um, Starship Rising. Very cool, very different uh, project for those who just know you from a movie like Clerks. Tell us about Starship Rising. 
Uh, Starship Rising uh, was written and directed by Neil Johnson, and I had previously worked on another film of his called Alien Armageddon. And um, it's been a friendship that I've really enjoyed and, and cherished um, because he's he's been there uh, for the last few years, and we've gotten to really be good friends. And um, he's had a lot of trust in me, and 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 also sees a lot in me that sometimes I don't see myself as a, as an actor. So it's mm-hmm. it's been really nice that way. Um, and I also did hear a makeup on Alien Armageddon. Uh, not the, not the, uh, special effects, but, you know, just the regular makeup. And so, um, but, uh, he, he gave me this role. Um, he pretty much was like, Marilyn, what would you want to play in this? And so it, he created this character who's, who's a very strong woman who's, uh, um, uh, a leader. Mm-hmm. And um, it's there's an intergalactic war going on, and she creates these robots, and is helping. Um, uh, oh, I can't think of the word. Oh shoot! <laughs> uh, well, she's helping the the. Oh, I can't think of the word. Anyway, um, she's helping out in some way. It's like the alliance. The alliance. That's, is that it? I can't think of it. Anyway, um, so that the war can be won and and things like that. So, but it it it's actually a. Uh, there was two movies actually shot at the same time. Oh. Um, so there is another one to come. I'm not quite sure if I'm seeing the second one. Um, you know, because it all depends on editing how they go. Because it's like there were some scenes that were shot that I don't remember seeing in the first one, so <laughs> I don't know if they're going to show up in the second one or not. Okay, um, <laughs> that'll be a nice and, surprise. Yeah, um, he's also thinking or wondering whether he's going to shoot a three and a four on this one as well. Um, but wow. it's the effects that he's done on this is is really amazing for the budget that he does these movies on. So, uh, I, it, they can be found on, I believe he said iTunes. It can be saved to the DVD queue on Netflix. Nice. And I believe he mentioned that it's for sale in Walmart. Sure. Wow. So look at that. I, you know, mm-hmm. twenty this 20 year journey that you've had, I, I bet there uh, wasn't much time during it where you were predicting that you'd become a sci-fi movie star, but there you are. And it looks like you're part of his burgeoning franchise. That's, that's yeah. great. Well, I mean, I've always been a, a fan of the genre. Now, mind you, though, I, I, as much as I'm a fan of sci-fi and horror and, and, and the, the comic uh, uh, genre as well, I'm not one of those fans that can remember every single line uh, scene and things like that. I'm not one of those kind of fans. <laughs> I wish I were a little bit like that, but it's just, that's that's just not my mindset. <laughs> that's all right. That's all right. Those brain cells are better used for something else anyway. <laughs> so, so Marilyn, we, we have to let you go, but before we wrap this up, um, how can people keep track of what you're doing? I know that in between your busy schedule, you're also still making convention appearances and things like that. Um, so fans of everything from Clerks up until now of yours can uh, come meet, greet, and uh, and see you. Uh, how can they follow you? Where well, can they I, follow I'm you? On, I, yeah, I'm on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, um, basically under my name, Marilyn Gigliotti. Uh Twitter is uh, that Clerks Girl. Um, I do have a, a website, MarilynGigliotti.com. And uh, those are the best uh, ways to see what's new and what's coming up and, and, and uh, be able to follow what I'm doing. Fantastic. Well, Marilyn, thank you for joining us here on Ravishly. Um, thank you. And, well, thanks. Pleasure all ours. Everyone, thanks for, for checking out this interview. We will see you next time with more fantastic women here on Ravishly.com. All good now? Hello, Jerry?